Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samueli. With me today, of course, is um, co-founder of The Gaggle, Peter Lavelle. I uh, was also a, a host of Artie's talk show, Crosstalk. Well, today was an astonishing day. Uh, astonishing for offering good news. We really have good news, but to the uh, as astonishment of us, of the whole world, um, the judge in London, the United Kingdom, uh, ruled against the extradition of Julian Assange. No one was expecting this. We were all very gloomy. And as she was reading out her judgment, and, and this is something we'll, we'll talk about uh, in this discussion, as she was reading out her judgment, you know, our hearts sank because she accepted all of the arguments of the US government and it seems preordained uh, that she will indeed sign off on the extradition request. But she didn't. And the reason that she cited was um, Julian Assange's uh, mental health and that it, given the oppressive nature of the US prison system, particularly the supermax prison uh, to which he would be sent, and particularly the special administrative measures under which he would live, um, that that would almost certainly trigger um, uh, suicidal uh, thoughts within um, Julian Assange, and she said would almost certainly lead to a, his suicide, that he was a far too intelligent and resourceful a person to be uh, thwarted by any of the restrictions uh, of the um, supermax prison system. So, wonderful news. Two important caveats. As I mentioned, uh, she accepted every single one of the US government's arguments. She rejected all of the defense's claims that this was a political persecution, that this is a, a threat to journalism, that there's a public interest uh, involved in what uh, uh, Julian was uh, doing, um, she rejected all of that. She limited her judgment on purely humanitarian grounds. So the threat to uh, media freedom remains. That's one caveat. Second caveat is that the United States government has already said that it intends to appeal uh, this decision, which means there is no automatic release uh, for Julian Assange. Now, um, she has scheduled a bail hearing for Wednesday. Um, and, but this is a little tricky for um, Julian because, of course, the U.S. government will immediately uh, uh, file for rejecting his uh, bail request by saying, look, he, he already absconded once uh, when he was on bail. He can't possibly have bail because um, uh, he will do it again. Um, so therefore, the, the Assange defense team has its work cut out to show why he won't abscond um, a second time. I, I don't know exactly how they would do it, uh, but that's, that's the challenge they face. All right, what's your take, Peter? Very good summation, George. Excellent. Um, the, the interesting thing for me with the judge citing Julian Assange's health, physical and mental, is that who put them, who put him in that situation? Exactly. Hmm? Who did that? You know, it comes back and bites you, doesn't it? Okay, the way they, uh, they treated him. I mean, he was, a, um, you know, you like him or dislike him, he's a journalist, he's not Al Capone, okay? And, and, and the, 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 uh, his imprisonment, um, confinement um, conditions were appalling and one expert after another. And I don't think these people are particularly politically biased. They're saying in our medical opinion, this is, he is deteriorating. And, and you and I, and other people that have been with us on the gaggle and across talk, I have always asked a direct question is that, are they trying to kill him? You know, and it's a, it's a difficult question to ask and it's even harder to answer. But I mean, I think we all know in the back of our mind, the, the treatment of him was intentional to, to, to see him deteriorate in every single possible way. Another thing, it's kind of an indictment of the American legal system, isn't it? I mean, so. I mean, when I was reading it, you, uh, Jeffrey Epstein came to mind, right? I mentioned that in the judgment, Jeffrey, the case of Jeffrey Epstein in the judgment. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a certainly a, a judgment on the U.S. legal system. Um, 
You're absolutely right about the bail conditions. Um, but since you know her, his health has been mentioned here as the reason for not going through with the extradition, maybe um, you know an ankle bracelet or or something like that. Okay, um, I'm I'm sure that he and his uh, defense team would be more than open to that. And you're absolutely right; the U.S. is going to keep trying. I don't, you know, since all of us got it wrong. I mean, I was told repeatedly people that uh, went to the trial, watched the proceedings all said to me to a person that the judge is very biased, very biased against Julian Assange. And one of the interesting things I found, and you know, you already did the good summation here, but I, I think we can flesh one of these out here. <clears throat> On the issue of free of speech, the judge said his activities, quote, went beyond the mere encouragement of a journalist. Now that is a very interesting sentence. I mean, and you can devote an enormous amount of thought to that about what freedom of speech means and what she meant by that. Um, I think it's absolutely fascinating, but it's it's chilling as well. It's very chilling, particularly since uh, Julian Assange, he didn't write the material that WikiLeaks uh, released, okay? He was the conduit, okay? Um, and, and I do find it very disturbing, as you rightfully pointed out in the beginning, is that um, uh, I mean, she didn't, I mean, she didn't say he was guilty of anything, but he certainly, she didn't, she certainly made it clear she didn't think he was innocent of the charges yeah. as well, okay? I think, you know, the, the thing is, is that, and this is what legal systems, you know, it, it, for popular consumption, no extra, extradition, but really what, it, what she was, was saying, I'm not passing judgment on any of this, is that I, don't, I just don't think he's in the, has the physical and, and, and mental capacity to go through an extradition. And that is, if you look at the 2003 UK-US extradition treaty, that is in it. And I'm sure that's what she's referencing here. So, um, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't contain how happy I am. I'm, I'm, I, I'm just over the moon. I mean, I, I'm just dumbstruck by this, okay? Because uh, everyone I talked to in Washington very closely thought it was a, a slam dunk that it was over. Um, so let's see, you know, since the judges mentioned this, you know, and what they did to his health in every single way, I mean, I, it's interesting to me what the US government is gonna say, um, because if, if the treatment is going to stay the same, um, the judgment most likely will stand. I mean, that's the reference point here. But I mean, the, it, Washington's pretty red faced right now, okay? And what, what, what do what, what does Washington do when they get a red face? They double down, okay? So it's going to be, the nastiness isn't over, but at, at least a glimmer of sanity came into our lives here. And, and thank God, because we, you know, Julian Assange is a real treasure, irrespective if you like his character or not. WikiLeaks exists for a reason, because journalists wouldn't do their job. No, I think that's uh, exactly right. And uh, the issue of journalists is quite a, quite an interesting one because, of course, um, she uh, because she addressed the humanitarian aspect, she addressed his um, the, the, his proneness to depression, his uh, you know his, his uh, suicidal thoughts and so on. Um, then you have to say, but the journalists have contributed to his feelings of oppression and you know de deep depression and this was a point made by Niels Meltzer um the uh, UN special rapporteur on torture um that it's precisely this horrific media campaign against him in other words it's a campaign being waged by the very people who should be supporting him who should be championing him that has actually contributed to his uh, feelings of uh, deep oppression. And she seems to have agreed with that. She doesn't mention Meltzer in her judgment, but she seems to accept that argument. So here we have a situation where you get this judge who is actually taking a more humane uh, approach to uh, Julian Assange than the journalist did. Yeah. And, then it, and, it is a, and it is a shocking. And, and as you said, it's also shocking that you that what she said about the u.s prison system this is a uk judge talking about the u.s prison. this isn't the russian prison system this isn't the chinese prison system the north korean prison system the iranian prison system this is the u.s prison system that she's talking about um and that as you said that makes the united states uh, a very red face because this is uh, not the first time that an extradition request was rejected uh to the united states on the ground 
that uh, th this person would not simply not be able to withstand uh, the mental stress of it. Because of course, why wouldn't he, you know, because he's not a criminal. This, he hasn't done anything criminal. So he has no business being in this horrific uh, supermax uh, prison system. So, yeah, uh, yeah go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, and, and the espionage, you know, charging him uh, with the, the Espionage Act, I mean, that, that goes that goes into very, very um, uh, delicate territory because Julian Assange is a journalist. And, and you know, we, for the most part, in a formal sense, we, we don't consider, you know, journalists an espionage. I mean, it, you know, we call it the fourth estate for a reason, okay? I mean, they're, they're supposed to put, uh, be questioning power here. And now conflating those two as another weird day dangerous precedent that we're in now. Because it obviously, what the US government is doing is sending a huge chilling effect to everyone in the world. You're not beyond our reach here. Now, the fact that you know the special relationship didn't work out this time around, which is gonna really infuriate uh, uh, a lot of people in Washington, and, and all of these mean-spirited people that made money off of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange in the past, and then they turned their back on him, okay? Oh, they wrote a lot of copy didn't they? Okay. They reveled in it, didn't they? And then they turn around and stab him in the back and they stab their own profession in the back. And it shows exactly what they are. They're just stenographers for power. And, and, and this case reminds all of us that that is the case here. And, um, you know, because all of us watching it so closely got it wrong, I, I'm, I'm really um, wary to predict what's going to happen next. But like I said, given the fact that the judge um, um, made her decision based on humanitarian uh, grounds that that might influence her with uh, 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 the, the bail discussion uh, on Wednesday. We'll see. I mean, she, she certainly wasn't predisposed positively towards him during the trial. Not, I can tell you, so true. many people told me yeah. that, you know, they just, she just would shoot everything down. Okay. Right. That's so, right. Um, but this is absolutely wonderful, fantastic news. And it, it gets Julian's name back out there in the media. I mean, th th this is something that doesn't usually happen. As a matter of fact, like we said, I mean, I just thought this was a slam dump. I, I, I was surprised the trial took so long. I, I, I just thought they would have the, the jet fueled up and just, you know, get on with it. And remember, uh, what made this particularly astonishing is that all of the um, motions that had been made uh, on Julian Assange's behalf by his lawyers, that he should uh, receive bail, that he should be in home confinement, that he should be put in a uh, more humane prison than Belmarsh. She rejected all of them. So you know, that's why it was so astonishing that she should suddenly uh, bring up the humanitarian issue because she certainly hadn't shown any particular humanity uh, up until then. But I, I, yes, I mean, there's, there's the issue obviously of the ankle bracelet. I, I don't know to what extent how, how, how much they guarantee that the person can be kept under surveillance because the United, US government is going to say, no, 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 any restrictions you put on his movement, he's going to get around because he's so smart and he's so devious. So that's why the, his lawyers really have their work cut out to answer all of the possible um, challenges that the US government is going to make. So, you know, it's wonderful news, but I, you know, I'm still, reluctant to um, to be celebrating because uh, you know the, the US government is going to throw everything it, it, it's got uh, for this hearing on Wednesday uh, so you know you know we'll see what what his lawyers can come up with what kind of a deal they can come up with um, uh, to guarantee that he won't abscond yeah, well, you know, they put him in this condition, okay, that that has to be kept in mind. What are they just going to continue doing it? I mean, that wouldn't make any logical sense to me. I mean, if this was the reason for the decision, then the treatment of Julian Assange during a, an appeal um, uh, has to be different. If, if it's the same, then it doesn't make any sense, okay? I mean, so he can die in a UK prison and not an American prison. What kind of argument is that? Right, right, right. And, and, and the thing is that if you win, um, you're supposed to get relief. I mean, that's the whole point of a legal system is that you get relief. I mean, it's like you've won. Uh, the minimum relief that you get is your release. Uh, so the idea that, you know, well, you've won this, this huge uh, victory, uh, but nothing changes. You know, you go back to Belmarsh and, and, and wait your turn while the U.S. government uh, files its um, appeal. Uh, that is clearly would be unjust. So she, so at the very minimum, she has to, um, uh, you know, 
find you know find some means of giving him relief um, because you know you know she's she's made her ruling. She says no extradition, so that's it. She she has to then act on it and release him, home confinement, whatever. But that's 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 what justice would mean. Well, and an appeal could take a very long time, just as long as the trial itself, um, and particularly with the change of administrations in the United States, um, the transition that's going on here. I want everybody watching this to keep in mind, why is this so important? Julian Assange, through WikiLeaks, exposed war crimes, war crimes by uh, uh, the US government and its allies, okay? He told the truth. That's why he's going through this. He told the truth. Julian Assange is a scapegoat. It's to create this chilling effect that no one ever do this ever again. And this is what it's all about here. It's, this is what it is. So much is at stake here. You know, essentially what the US government and its lawyers want to say is that telling the truth can get you into trouble. It can destroy your life. You can go to prison forever if you cross us. Okay. That is what it is at stake here. Right. No, they, they, that, that's exactly right. And, and you know, we've said this before and others have, have made the point that it is a, a shocking indictment of, um, of our legal and political system that the man who exposed these crimes, who exposed the war crimes, is, has been in prison effectively for the past 10 years, while the people who committed the crimes have been doing very nicely. Uh, they might have nice gigs on CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. Um, you know, they they have big jobs in uh, in the administrations. I mean, a number of the people who are in, who are involved in war crimes are coming in with Biden. They're all sitting pretty. Um, they're the ones who, who who are right now fulminating at this disgusting British judge for releasing uh, Julian Assange. So. The, the injustice is um, manifest. It's everything's inverted, isn't it? I mean, the people that committed these crimes documented. They're document. That's why they're so upset. They're, they're, they're documents that name names and dates and and figures. Okay, it, it, it's not like the Russia hoax. Okay, where there was nothing, not a scintilla of evidence. This is in. I mean. It, I, I challenge anyone to, to read these documents. I mean, there are so many of them. That's why they had to index it. It's, it's so vast. It is overwhelming. Right. This is not innuendo. It's not a rumor. It's not an allegation. These right. are facts. Right. And, 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 they, and the, the people that you just mentioned, the, the description, they don't even really deny it, okay? It just, but you know, he released it. Okay, no, no. What, let's let's talk about that later. What's it's inside the documents? You know, it's it's like with um, uh, uh, Hillary Clinton's emails. How dare um, WikiLeaks expose us? You know, but they don't talk about what's in the emails. Okay, and this is an obvious switch in bait all of the time. And on top, of it, no one has proven that Julian Assange and WikiLeaks put people's lives at risk. Okay. No, that's exactly right. So not, none of those uh, things has ever been proven. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's sad that, you know, while he's been um, in prison, particularly since um, uh, 2019, um, basically we haven't heard much from WikiLeaks. It would be wonderful if now, if he, he's now released, he's in home confinement, WikiLeaks gets back into motion because it, it's been a, 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 a terrible loss for the world that uh, WikiLeaks has just effectively been out of action uh, for a number of years. Uh, because as we've seen um, with other releases of information, they're often very badly handled mm -hmm. and blow up in people's faces. I mean, particularly, you know, like a Hunter Biden uh, tape, which uh, Hunter Biden computer, um, had WikiLeaks handled it, they would have known how to do it. They would have known exactly what information to release, how to do it, release it in an accessible form, rather than in this haphazard way in which you know bits and pieces are released. We don't get access to all of the documents. So you can see how, what a terrible loss it has been uh, for, for everybody, uh, the fact that uh, Julian Assange has been um, out of action. Yeah, well, we'll see where it goes here. I mean, today was a, is a good day, but it's it's far from over. Um, it, it's just that you know, I, I'm, I'm 
with this decision here, it sheds light on this story here that the, the Western media just, just can't stand. I mean, if it's bad news for Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, they'll report it. But if it's good news, it, they'll play it down, okay? And um, we'll, we'll wait for the next round. Um, but it, I, I, I want people to feel encouraged, okay? Because this is a glimmer of light for all of us. Um, like I said, everything is inverted. The people that committed these crimes get off scot-free and uh, are lauded, you know, and, and, and promoted. Um, and, and, and people that um, expose um, hideous truths are the ones that are punished. That's the kind of world we live in right now. And um, it has nothing to do with what, it, what administration is in power. And, and the, it's, it's these elites um, that expose uh, their dirty work. And um, we have a right to know. They do it in our name, don't they? They do it in our name. Um, and so, you know, it, 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 it's a really good autopsy of, a, of a American foreign policy. And, and that's why I encourage everyone to read it, okay? You and I reference stuff from WikiLeaks all of the time. All of that, we don't, maybe, maybe we don't always mention it, but we know because we read WikiLeaks. And one, uh, and I, I think it was in February before all this stuff happened with, uh, with COVID, is that um, uh, I, I went to an event, you went to the later event um, in, in London. And um, one of the things I remember saying to the, 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 the people that were gathered, gathered in a church, um, I said, you know, um, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks uh, was a relief to me because I, I understood that myself and my friends are not crazy because we suspected all of this stuff. And what he did is that not only connected all the dots, but it gave it out into a format, like you said, that you can completely easily digest and understand. So it is a vindication for the truth, okay? And 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 it's a, 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 a an indictment, an indictment to uh, the American legal system. Yes. Yes. Um, no, that's that's exactly right. Um, and, um, you know, we we're obviously still watching as to what um, President Trump will do. Uh, many of us have been you know, becoming increasingly pessimistic about um, that, that he has any real intention of pardoning uh, Julian Assange. Time is running out. And given that he's essentially fighting for his political life and in many ways, um, depends now on a variety of Republicans who would look askance at any um, pardon for uh, Julian Assange. I'm thinking in particular of somebody like Ted Cruz, who's leading the, um, uh, the defense effort uh, in, in the Senate on behalf of uh, Trump. Um, so that may well be one of the considerations uh, going on in the, in the mind of uh, Trump. I, you know, I don't want to alienate uh, my Republican allies while I'm still fighting for the presidency. Um, yeah, I mean, you, know, you and I have on back. Wednesday, but you know, whether he still leaves these allies, but nonetheless, he wouldn't want to do anything to um, antagonize people like you know, these hawks like Ted Cruz. I mean, you and I have gone back and forth on this one many, many times. I mean, my position is, is that obviously he should do it because he's going to piss off people anyway. So, I mean, I agree. No, I absolutely. I absolutely agree. Yeah, absolutely agree. But I just, you know, I, I just wanted to tell you what, what he's really going on in, in his mind. Um, and that may be, but, you know, but again, the Republicans are split. They're not, they're not all, you know, people like Ted Cruz. I mean, you have people like um, Rand Paul, who has called for pardon for uh, Assange. Uh, I think some of the uh, Republicans in the House uh, would also be very uh, open to uh, a pardon for Assange. So, you know, the Republicans are, are divided on this. They're not all uh, yeah. Ted Cruz style hawks. You know, every everyone watching this, you know, we always say like, share, and subscribe because that's everybody does that. But if there's any video that you share from the gaggle, please make it this one. Please get the word out, okay? Please do it. We we need awareness, and and and, and when awareness creates outrage, and anyone that knows this story should be completely outraged by it, okay? So please share this. Please talk about it with your friends and, and, and find someone you disagree with about it and try, you know, try to change my mind, you know, and that helps you grow, okay? Because George and I, we, we read adversarial press every single day. That, which, that's what makes us sharp, okay? Because you have to go into battle every single day. He, Julian Assange has been in battle for a very long time. Um, so has WikiLeaks, you know, please, please become more aware and get part of the fight. Yeah, no, absolutely right. 
Um, and, and particularly, as in this case, uh, and as in many other cases, the media have done a very poor job. Uh, rather than going into battle uh, on behalf of uh, Julian Sancho. Let's remember, you know, there haven't been too many journalists, you know, manning the barricades in, in anticipation of this uh, decision. So this judge is the sudden, you know, show, show of humanitarianism. That came out of the blue. That's not because of journalists were, were demanding, hey, show him mercy. No, no there were no, no articles in the Times, the Independent, the Telegraph saying, you know, this is a this is, man needs to be shown mercy. He, you know, he, he can't be allowed to be uh, thrown into the oppressive prison system. No, she did it herself. A very far from liberal judge did it herself. No thanks to journalists. So you know, you know, absolutely the, essential. Yeah, the, the, people got to get the message out. Forget, forget the, you know, the mainstream media. You know, the, the, the irony and weirdness of all of this is that Daniel Ellsberg was, was a, a witness in the trial. And, you know, I, I just have to, you know, I would have liked to have been like a, a, a fly on the wall looking at journalists covering the trial when Daniel Ellsberg of the uh, Pentagon Papers, which he was, you know, he's like the crown, um, up until all the nonsense, he was kind of like the crown prince of, you know, you know, of, of, of being a whistleblower, uh, um, uh, uh, informing the public about the malfeasance and mis uh, illegal activity of government. And, you know, and he said, how do you, how do they look at him? I mean, do they say that he's a traitor too? Okay, I mean, they, they, they can't, you know, they, they all bend themselves up into pretzels about, you know, oh, but what about this? What about that? No, what about the truth? <laughs> it's a simple one, isn't it? It's simple. The truth is what matters here. No, that's a, that's a very good point. And this is a point, that's something that Daniel Ellsberg has pointed out again and again and again, which he said, hey, if you're supporting me, and if you think, oh, the Pentagon Papers is great because the Pentagon Papers exposed the Vietnam War crimes, if you believe all that, then you know you need to support guy. Manning. You need to support Assange. You need to support Snowden because they're doing what I was doing. I was like, no, no, no. You know we we like the Pentagon Papers because it's safe. It's always safe to be for something which has happened 50 years ago. No, it doesn't matter what happened 50 years ago. Now the, the battle is now. <laughs> you know we're not fighting the 1970 Pentagon Papers case. Now we're fighting for Julian Assange today. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's such an important distinction. I mean, I don't expect much from governments, okay? Governments will always hide um, their bad behavior and, and, and their um, very evil intents. But journalists used to be different in our time, at least, okay? And that's completely gone. It is completely gone. That is the void that we live in. And as I've already said it in this video, and I say it in every single video, you know, if, if uh, uh, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks um, are important because journalists wouldn't do their job. And, right. and that's one of the things we always have to remember. Exactly. Well, um, we will, of course, be maintaining our customary laser-like focus, particularly on Wednesday when there's the, um, the hearing on um, Julian Assange's bail application. And we will, of course, be there. Um, so as Peter said, uh, if you like the gaggle, please, please like, share, and subscribe. And for this particular video, do it 10 times over. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, see you soon. Bye.